Hello everybody. Wait, what? Oh, you're right over there! <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Elian and welcome back to Hush Hush. It has been a couple months since I've done a video on this, but um, I'm back. Also, why is this on? So, this is going to be short and sweet because we are going into chapter 4. Bro. <gasps> Baby. All right, so. <laughs> All right, so. I already saved it here. It's time to get into this. I have more than one I need. Swap. Sixty-nine. All right. Let's not waste any more time. It's a quiet night as you're driving to the restaurant. Hold on, let me turn this up a little bit. Start over. It's a quiet night as you're driving to the restaurant. There's a weird humidity in the air, but the breeze off the ocean is strangely cold. You're right next to the ocean. A few drops of water on your windshield suggest the water the weather might have secret plans for you. But for now, the clouds stay silent. As you round a corner, a car passes you in the opposite lane. You catch a glance in your rear view mirror of the car doing a 180 turn and following you. You get a bad feeling about this. You turn down the side road just to see if they follow you. And it does. The car takes the same turn and seems to increase speed. You hit the gas, looking for a good place to turn back. And suddenly you see flashing lights and here's a... I should have... No, such sad noise came on. The car behind you, it turns out, is a ghost is a ghost car. It fires its silence only for a moment, but it keeps its lights on. <laughs> I was going to say something. I am currently recovering from cold while recording, so you're gonna hear some some of me flaring up my phlegm, coughing up phlegm. You pull over on the shoulder and wait. The police car pulls up behind you, but the cops don't exit the car for a long time. Finally, after almost five minutes of the police car looming behind you, you see the doors open. A steps Fumi, also an officer, in a much fancier uniform than you expected. <sighs> I'm getting chills. Oh my. You only see him. You only get a split second to look at the officer before he taps your window. The man is obviously much older than Fumi. And of Asi Asian ancestry. Hmm. His name text is S. Colossae. Good evening. Do you know why I pulled you over? Was it the speeding? I bet it was the speeding. It's always the speeding. No, not tonight. But you never know. Things might still work out that way. Take a look back there. You see my partner? I know she That's is. That's Detective Sway Hunt. I understand the two of you know one another. Yes, Fumi and I are very, very well acquainted. Yeah, that's my understanding too. All right, just a couple of quick questions, and we'll get you on your way. All right, sir. Do you know a young woman by the name of Cassie Caprice? Yes, Cassie and I are pretty good friends. I see. That's good to hear. That girl could use some friends with her best interests at heart. She had a rough past. I'd hate to see her life turn upside down again. Yeah. You must be pretty popular with the ladies around town, yes? I mean... Sonic's here, so guess I am kind of popular with the ladies. 
even that one, don't want to mention, but... According to witnesses, you've been seen around town with one, Mio Faro. Yes. Oh, and also our city's most eligible millionaire, El Reed. Yes, sir. Are both of these women friends of yours, too? <laughs> this is the tra strangest traffic sh stop ever. Yes, I know them. Um, yes, I know them. Oh, I would hope you know them. They're nice. I don't know about you, Detective Zwei Honda, but I don't tend to make out with strangers. I have made recent exceptions, sir. But for the most part, your point is clear. Do you know a woman by the name of Miss Arison Desori Kitagawa? <gasps> Miss Desori. And are you aware that she and Miss Kasi Caprice are involved in the transport and distribution of illegal narcotics? Oh, Alice. Wait a minute. That's too weird to think about. That's quite the accusation. And that doesn't answer my question. Listen carefully. I'll lay it all out for you. Yes, sir. You're on your way to a date. Yes? You're meeting a Miss Irokawase tonight. Is that correct? Yes. Good. Honesty. That's what I like to see. What are you saying? I've got witnesses that puts you around town with Miss Caprice. Mm -hmm. As well as some interesting security footage from the mall. I've also gotten some fast hand accounts that you've been seeing, Miss Kawase. Apparently, the two of you are quite intimate. Ring a bell? You're Saji Kawase, Hiro's father. Why, yes, that's right. Nice to meet you. Generally, we're more careful with this information. But I feel like maybe it'll help you make the right decision here tonight. Miss Caprice is a CI, a criminal informant. She's helping us with a case, a big one. Wrote a big fish in her net. Maybe you're close to getting scooped in that net. Maybe you're not. But here's what I know for sure. Starting tonight. You're going to stay away from my daughter. You're going to break things off with her. Let her down gently. And you're going to leave town. Or I'm going to bring Miss Caprice in. Hit her with trafficking. Grand larceny. Break and enter her possession with intent to distribute. Hit's a long list. Maybe a few things fall onto you too. Officer Kwase looks to Detective Fumi and nods. We're done here. He turns to leave and Fumi sticks her head into the passenger window. She whispers urgently. I don't know what all this personal garbage is between you and the Chief, and I don't care. I've still got your back. But don't fuck up my investigation. 
I'll contact you soon. Getting really in character right now. Fumi walks back to her with the police car. The sound of her heeled boots top topping a layer of confidence and resistance. What's happening? A moment later, the police lights go out. And the ghost car pulls a U turn and drives off. If you hurry, you will be a little late meeting here at the restaurant. I'm feeling a bad a little bit. Go. <sighs> you continue your drive to the restaurant, suddenly conscious of every other car on the road that might be following you. I'm getting a little shaky right now. After a short drive, you get to the restaurant and park. Just as you're opening your, your car door, a motorcycle suddenly drives up beside you and parks. You wear their helmet on, you recognize Zero. <clears throat> She's wearing a bike jacket and a cute dress. Hey! I saw you pulling in. I was doing laps around the block to kill time. Doesn't matter fast enough. Go around again. <laughs> so, how are you doing? You look great. Oh my god. <clears throat> you look great. Yeah, sure. Don't even pretend that what I'm wearing matches or whatever. It doesn't matter. One problem with rainbow hair, it's hard putting together a matching ensemble. Who cares? You're still beautiful! Combine that with riding leathers and a boss helmet, and I make Eli cry every time I leave the house. Yeah. But you know, whatever. They're just clothes. They won't serve us without them. So do what you gotta do. Anyway, let's go. To the day. Yes. <laughs> Careful. That's how you spread germs. Make sure you shower before your dates. Seriously. I, I don't want to say it like <laughs> Your blush is immediately and she gently swings your arm as the two of you walk inside. Inside the restaurant, the atmosphere is intimate and warm. Live music is playing somewhere, and the smell of garlic and butter fills the room, and it's all filled with the world event, the piano version of the world adventure from Sonic Unleashed. Great song, by the way. The Mate D, the Mate de D takes your name and immediately instructs you to follow them to your table. Your mom follows you, but her eyes are wandering around the rest of the room, taking it in. Wow. You know, I've never eaten here before. I'm more of a kale salad at home kind of gal. I have... No. Mmm, everything looks... expensive. I gotta watch my money too. <laughs> I know, they told me I couldn't bring you, but I insisted. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's why I have my mic up for a reason. Wouldn't be the first time a place had a no rainbow haired kawases allowed. Though, Usually, that's more of Eli's doing. Hmm. <clears throat> After the two of you are seated, you notice that Iro is staring at you with a dreamy smile. When you look back, there's a moment where she just smiles and grows a little abashed. She blushes and laughs seriously to herself. <laughs> hey, so... There's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. About the other day, at the beach house. 
<laughs> that was fun. That's not doing it justice. <laughs> it was mind blowing. You win over my answer. It was like not eating all day and coming home to the smell of bread baking. I didn't realize how hungry I was. How much I needed. Well. How much I needed that thing you did with your tongue. <laughs> and I need to ask you. Did you want... More? I mean, do you want to be more than friends? Fishes in her seat, you can feel she gets the surge of adrenaline because she reaches over and squeezes your hand with surprising strength. Like that one moment in Song Movie 2 where Knuckles crunches Sonic's hand. <laughs> I want you so badly. I know that when summer ends, you'll be heading home. Flying away. But other than my brother, there's nothing holding me here in Sabrosa. I've always dreamed of packing up everything on my motorcycle and hitting the open road. So maybe when the summer's over, maybe I come with you. And it might work, and it might not, and whatever. But I'm excited to try. Adventure! What do you say? Do you want to see where this goes? Oh god. I want to see if this works. <gasps> Please. I know things will be hard, but... Is it me? You don't want me? Did I... push you away? Oh god. I'm not who I say I am. Everything you know about me is a lie. No! I don't believe that! I know you've been with other women, but... I know you're a good person! Just tell me the truth! Why don't you... Why don't you want me? Tell me! What did you say? My father forbid you from seeing me! And you're just... doing what he says? <sighs> the burning rage comes from... comes to your side. She stands and... The other rich from the patrons are startled into silence and look over to us. Well, here's a little piece of information you need to know about my father. Since you're just doing what he wants anyway. I hate my father. 
My father is a cruel, heartless, selfish son of a bitch! He's only ever brought me misery! It's all his fault! All the worst things in my life are his fault! And I never want to hear from either of you ever again! Stay away from my daughter. And you're going to leave town. <laughs> <laughs>